When NSA recruiters went to the University of Wisconsin earlier this week to sell the students on the idea of working for the agency, well, they got more than they bargained for. The informed students turned the question and answer session into a hearing on trial where the NSA's lies, their legality, and how they, the NSA, defines the word adversary. The students recorded audio of the exchange on an iPhone, proving that the language analyst NSA recruiters were left tongue-tied. Yeah, I just had a question. You said that earlier that the two tasks that you do, one is sort of figuring out the, um, tracking down the, the sort of communications of your adversaries, mm -hmm. and the other is protecting the communications of officials. Right. So, do you consider Germany and the company, countries that the NSA has been spying on to be adversaries, or are you right now not speaking the truth? I mean, do you consider Germany, etc., an adversary, these European countries, or are you right now not telling us the truth and lying when you say that actually you simply track the, you know, you, you keep focusing on that, but clearly the NSA is doing a lot more than that, as we know. So I'm just asking our for a clarification. What are foreign intelligence requirements are? So, uh, I mean, you know, you can define adversary as enemy, and clearly Germany is not our enemy. But would we have um, foreign national interest from an intelligence perspective on what's going on across the globe? Yeah, we do. I mean, that's our requirements that come to us as an intelligence community organization from the policy makers, from the military, from whoever, are, are global. So, so advers the adversaries, you actually mean anybody and everybody. There's nobody then by your definition that is not an adversary. Is that correct? That is not correct. Who is not an adversary? Well, okay. I can answer your questions, but the reality no, is... No, I'm just trying to get the clarification because you told us what the two nodes of your work are, but it's not clear to me what that encompasses, and you're being fairly unclear at the moment about what you consider to be an adversary. Some, apparently it's somebody who is not just an enemy, so, it's something broader than that, and yet it doesn't seem to encompass everyone. So what is, what is the... So for us, um, our business is apolitical, okay? Um, Okay. <laughs> we, we do not generate the intelligence requirements. Right. They are levied on us, and so if there is a requirement for foreign intelligence concerning this issue or this region uh, or whatever, then that is, if you want to use the word adversary, you can, you know, we might use the word target. That is what we are going after. That is the intelligence target that we are going after because we were given that requirement. Whether it's adversary and a global war on terrorism sense or adversary in terms of national security interests or whatever, that's for policymakers, I guess, to make that determination. But we respond to the requirements that we're given, if that helps. And there's a separation. The, for, the language analyst we work in the SIGINT side of the house. We don't really work on the information assurance side of the house. That's the guy setting up the protecting our communication. Yeah, I'm just, I guess I'm surprised that for language analysts, you're incredibly imprecise with your language, and it just doesn't seem to be clear. So adversary basically is what any of your so-called customers, as you call them, which is also a strange term to use for a government agency, decide if anybody wants, any, any part of the government wants something about some country, suddenly they, they are now internally considered or termed an adversary. I mean, that's what you, what you seem to be saying. I'm saying you can think about it using that term. But the reality is, it's, it's our government's interest in some aspect of what a foreign country is doing. Right. So, so I'm sorry, it can be anyone. As long as they levy the requirement on us through the right vehicle that exists for this, right. that it is defined in terms of being a foreign intelligence requirement, 
there's a national framework of foreign intelligence. Uh, what's it called? The, the, Huh? Yes, yeah, the National Priority Prioritization of Intelligence Framework or whatever that determines these are the issues that we're interested in, these are how they're prioritized. Your slide said adversary, and it's, I agree with you, I mean, I think target would probably be a little bit better, but it's not actually just a word game. The, the problem is that these countries are fairly, I mean, it's one thing, you know, I think Afghanistan probably is not shocked to realize that they're on the list to be surveilled. I think Germany seems to be quite shocked at what has been going on, so um, this is not just a word game, obviously, and you understand that as well as I do. So. Um, it's, it's very strange that you're selling yourself here in one particular fashion. It's ab absolutely not true. I don't think we're selling ourselves in an untrue fashion. Well, this is a recruiting session and you're telling us things that aren't true. I mean, and, you know, we also know that the NSA took down brochures and fact sheets after the Snowden revelations because those fact sheets also had severe inaccuracies and untruths in them. Right? So, how are we supposed to believe what you're saying? I have a lifestyle question that you seem to be selling. Um, it sounds more like a colonial expedition, you know, the globe is our playground was the words that you used, or the phrasing that you used, and, um, you know, you seem to be saying that you can do your work, you can analyze said documents for your so-called customers, but then you can go and get drunk and dress up and have fun without thinking of the repercussions that your information that you're analyzing has on the rest of the world. Um, and I also want to know what are the qualifications that one needs to become a whistleblower because that sounds like a much more interesting job. And I think the Edward Snowdens and the Bradley Mannings and Julian Assange's of the world will will prevail ultimately. I mean, I think I think the question here is: Do you do you actually can think about? the ramifications of the work that you do, which is deeply problematic, or do you just okay. dress up in costumes and get drunk? That's why in the context, when I was talking about reporting information, the intelligence that we get and reporting it in the right context is so important because the consequences of bad political decisions by our policymakers are something we all suffer from, right? And people suffer from the misinformation that you pass along, so, so you should take responsibility as well. And we take it very seriously that when we give information to our policymakers, we do give it to them in the right context so they can make the best decision with the best information available. Is that what That's why we don't just doing? tell them this happened. Is that we tell what Mike Clapper was doing when he partnered himself in front of Congress? Was he giving accurate information when he said we do not collect any intelligence? on the United States citizens, and, oh no, it's only occasionally, perhaps unintentionally, or was he perjuring himself when he made a statement in front of Congress under oath uh, that he later declared to be erroneous or at least untruthful answer? How do you feel personally having a boss who's comfortable perjuring himself in front of Congress? There is not General Oh, well, General Alexander also lied in front of Congress. Uh, it, well, probably because access to the Guardian is restricted at Department of Defense computers. And I'm sure that they don't encourage people like you to actually think about these things. Thank God, men like Edward Snowden, who your organization is now part of a manhunt, trying to track down, trying to put a little hole somewhere for the rest of his life. Thank God they exist. And why are you denigrating anything else done with language? You, we don't do that. We don't read cultural artifacts, or we don't read poetry, or things like that. There are other things to do with language than joining this group, okay? And this job isn't for everybody. You know, and that's part of the reason for coming out here, is that academe is a great career. So is this job for liars? Is that what you're saying? Because, I mean, clearly you're not able to give us forthright answers. I mean, do you, like, given the fact, given the way that the NSA has behaved, Given the fact that we have been lied to as Americans, given the fact that fact sheets have been pulled down because they clearly had untruths in them, given the fact that Clapper and Alexander lied to Congress, is that a qualification for being in the NSA? Do you have to be a good liar? I don't consider myself to be a liar in any fashion. And the reality is, I mean, this was built as a, if you were potentially interested in an NSA career, come to our session. If you're not, if this is your personal belief and your understanding of what has been presented, 
then you know there's nothing that says you need to come and apply and work for us. We're not here. Our role as NSA employees is not to represent NSA. The things that are in that press right now about NSA to the public. That's not our role at all. That's not my area of expertise. I have not. Good. Right, but you're here recruiting, and so you're selling the organization. So, I, I mean, I'm less interested in what your specialized role is within the NSA. I don't care. The fact is you're here presenting a public face for the NSA, and you're trying to sell the organization to people that are as young as high schoolers and trying to tell it that this is an attractive option in a context in which we clearly know that the NSA has been telling us complete lies. So I'm wondering, is that a qualification? I, I don't believe the NSA is telling complete lies. And I do believe that, you know, I mean, people can, you can read a lot of different things that are are um, portrayed as, as fact. And that doesn't make them fact just because they're in newspapers and or intelligence that's reports? Not really our, but that's not our purpose here today. And I think, you know, if you're not interested in a, there, there are probably people here who are interested in a language career. The trouble and is we can't opt out of NSA surveillance. And we don't get answers. So we actually, you know, it's not an option. You're posing it as a choice like, oh, you know, people who are interested can just sit here and those of us who are not interested can leave. If I could opt out of NSA surveillance and it was no longer my business, that would be fine. But it is my business because all of us are being surveilled. So that we're here. Correct. That is not our so business. That, that's, that doesn't business. seem to be incorrect given the leaks, so right? And you are not able, the NSA has not been able to actually put out anything that is convincing contrary to that. I don't understand what's wrong with having some accountability. So, you know, if you wanted to have you a cop out. We have complete accountability, and there's absolutely nothing that we can or have done um, without approval of the, the three branches of the government, the programs that were enacted. In the New York Times, did you read about part this illegal wiretapping? Why are you lying? Do you agree with your review on them? Is there a review that says there are only been 50 instances and they were all documented and done correctly with the money for the if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. One Truth for Life, right here on YouTube. For updates and additional content, follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash One Truth for Life and on Twitter at One Truth for Life. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.